Hello, my name is Stevetus and welcome to this little video about best practices in Object D, where I want to show you a few tips and tricks that you can apply to Dart and also Visual Studio Code to get more out of Object D and to make the development of data packs faster. If you don't have any clue what Object D is and how to use it, take a look at this video up here where I introduce it to you. But now let's get started. The first one should be already familiar. You can start your Object D project right in Visual Studio Code. This is fairly simple, just hit F5 and Visual Studio Code will bring up this little window here where you can configure what should start here. For us, this is the index.dart file. This is always the root file of your project. So we insert it right here, close it again. And now we can hit F5 and you can see on the right here, it compiled our project and generated all the functions. If you don't want this debug window right here, you can use control F5 and it just generates your project. But it is annoying, of course, to press this key on the keyboard and Object D also has a tool that automatically detects if you change something with your widgets and just generates the part that you changed. This is known as hot reloading. To enable that, you first have to take the arguments of this main function here and pass it on to the create project. So object D actually knows when you want to hot reload. And then you open a terminal. This can be done in VS Code with this up here. And of course, also make sure that you have the CLI installed. If you don't know what this is and how to install it, watch this video up here. And then we can just run object D serve and input our source file. So our index.dart. And now it says it watches all your files and you can also type R to generate the pack manually. But first let's take a look at how this works automatically. So for example, this lock here, we can change this to clicked. And if I bring up the console again, you can see it says doing a hot reload and it just generated this object D click.mc function. Don't wonder about this object D.json. This is removed when you do a full build of your project. And also let's check out the R thing. You can just type in R here. It will take some time. And it also says project did not change because obviously we didn't change anything with our widget tree. So maybe you've also encountered things like this here. This is a mess. You can't really tell what belongs where and which widgets we have here. So I would recommend to always enter a comma here. You can always do this with the arguments of a widget or as well in a array like this one here. And why we do that is actually the next tip. We can just right click and say format document. And the formatter actually knows where you set the commas right here and does a line brick here. So now we have our entire widget tree indented and also with these line breaks here. And this formatting is really powerful. Well, the core advantage of object D over the standard MC function is that you can build your own widgets and reuse them in multiple parts of your data pack. I would recommend that you put everything into a separate module that you can use wherever you like and also keep track of what you're doing and which features you're developing. So for example, if we put a new file in here, let's name it tips and then we specify a child. This would be very inconvenient to have all of your widgets and whatever goes in this file inside of the main tree here. So I would recommend you put this in a separate widget. Let's name this tips file and always close it with a comma at the end. Let's generate this new file tips.dart. Now we have encapsulated the widget tree of our tips file. Of course, we have to import this. To do this, you can always click on this the light bulb here and this imports your file automatically. Another advantage of a separate widget is that you can define your variables and properties here. 
I would always advise you if you're working with scoreboards, attacks, or even boss boss that you put this in a separate variable first. So let's create a score variable here. S1 equals a score, let's say entity.self. What you can do with this variable here is if we bring up a for dot off here, we can just include it that way dot set. And it's very common that you use a score multiple times. And this is a great way to make it a bit shorter. So let's say you want to check if the scoreboard here is greater than another scoreboard or a number. Well, you would use the if widget and then maybe check as one matches range, range. And now it is bigger than a number. So we have to just specify from, and this has to be five. And then we can execute something. While well, this range here and this matches range is really annoying. And you also have multiple methods here, for example, bigger or, or equal to another scoreboard. While well, the whole thing can just be shorter by using operators. And operators are these things here or this one. So we can just say S1 should be greater than 2. And this will convert automatically into the format that you saw earlier. And here we can also input another score. Or if we use the equal, that is this one right here, we can even put a range in here. And so it also tests for a range. And of course, you can also calculate with this. So let's say plus one, or again, another scoreboard. And you can also assign a new value to it. That's this, this operator here, and we can set it to five, for example. That are these little things that make your code more readable and more and easier to write. That's true. You can actually use if and for, so not the object D if and for, but the Dart if and for from the programming language inside of your widget tree. So let's say we have a Boolean variable here and set this to true. We can check inside of this generate method here if this B is true and return another widget, for example, that also have, has an if in it and so on. But instead, we can also use an if, so the lowercase if, inside of the widget tree. And we can check for B. And then we can insert a widget that should only be in, the, in this widget tree if the condition is true. So let's include a log here. So in this way, you can dynamically add widgets or remove widgets to the tree. And the same also goes for four. If you use the snippet right here, and for example, set this to 10, we can input a log here and use the I, always the comma at the end here. And this would translate into 10 times log with the I inside of there. These are also few nice features of the Dart programming language. The next one is actually an extension. So you go into this tab right here, and this is basically a, a bracket pair colorizer. So maybe you've already noticed this in some videos where some of the brackets are colored. And so you can just take a look at the color of this bracket here and find the matching bracket really, really easy. So just search for the bracket pair colorizer and it doesn't matter which version you take. So the Dart plugin itself also has a few things that you can modify. One feature that is relatively new is that you can get the auto completion. Remember this is, this is this window right here and you can get auto completion using machine learning. So it will already try to guess what you use it what you use next based on code that you already have written. For that, you have to go into the Dart and Flutter extensions right here. And here you have an option, Analyzer Additional Arguments. And here you want to add this Enable Completion model. You can also find this in the video description below. And just click OK. You can try this and see if your auto completion is better now. What you also want to enable is 
the render indent guides. These, this are these lines right here. So you can see if you formatted this correctly, which widget belongs where and where it ends and starts. And the last thing is the closing label. There it is, closing label. And this will show annotations like this one right here, like a comment. And this furthermore enhances the experience of your development. Another big thing is debugging. So you may have noticed this bar right here where you can set these red points here. And these points are basically stop points that let you stop the generation process and take a look at the variables. So if you set this point here and enter the debug mode, this is again F5. Then you can see this yellow thing here and you can just hover over single variables and see their state and also use this window up here to step further into the program. Here you can see the operator. Then we can take a look at the then array and it will also go through each widget inside of here and you can inspect the properties and, and see errors coming. This should us be straightforward. I've told it multiple times. You can just hover over a widget that you use to get all the properties right here and also documentation. This documentation is very similar to the online documentation, objectd.stevatist.com, also in the description. And most of the time you also have an example here that shows how to use it and illustrates what it does. If you have further questions what operators to use and how they are implemented, you can always go on a widget or any object in Object D and hit F5 and this will open the source file for this. So obviously all widgets in Object D are, are also Dart classes. And here you can take a look at the source code, at the properties and you can also change something and make these widgets your own with own behavior and so on. And this is the last tip. Just take a look at the playlist, see what you need, what you want to know more of. I have over 40 videos on this topic and you can just take a look at it to get a few more examples. And as well, check out the documentation with the get started guide, installation and so on. There you can also find all the videos. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see us in the next video.